Uh, thank you very much for keeping it why in the morning. Thank you for keeping it why 254. My name is Ram Aguko. Uh, just in time for the very next conversation of the day. And this morning is all about national values. Now, uh, we would like th this conversation that we are talking about this particular morning so is all about helping the youth, you and I, to understand the issues of governance and the youth empowerment. Well, um, how can we establish a positive understanding of national values and principles of governance? governance amongst the youth across the country. How do we promote national values? This particular conversation is uh, going to be very quite, inter quite interesting for you and I because we shall be able to understand the effect of these issues and whether they play a role in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, you know, activities. Values and society it's all about, you know, uh, is what we shall be conversing uh, today. I'm joined by Josiah Musili. He is a secretary at the Directorate of National Cohesion cohesion and values at the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. And thank you for finding, for finding time to join me this morning. Thank Opu you. Yes. Uh, you remember we are broadcasting live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254. Remember it's www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254. Follow up this conversation online and ensure that you participate with us. Engage. Give us your thoughts. The hashtag as always is why in the morning at Ram Aguko and at y254 channel. National values are they enshrined in the constitution and did you know uh, about this particular issue. Are you aware that this, uh, the directorate, that is the uh, Directorate of National Cohesion and Values is actually different from NCIC? <laughs> well, today let's, let's decipher, decipher this thing. Uh, Musili, let's first of all start with the di directorate itself yeah? and its man mandate. Why does uh, it exist? What is its mandate? And uh, how key or how important is it, especially in our country today? Uh, thank you very much, Ram, for hosting us today mm -hmm. uh, to speak about national values. Uh, it is uh, important that we get to communicate to the youth on uh, matters national values. Mm -hmm. The Directorate of National Coalition was established in 2008 through an executive order mm -hmm. uh, in the ministry, in the then Ministry of Justice uh, and Constitutional Affairs. So when the directorate was established, it became the direct the Ministry of National Co uh, the Ministry of Justice, National mm -hmm. Coalition, and Constitutional Affairs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, thereafter, in uh, 2010, uh, we at uh, on the promulgation of the new constitution, we were given the additional mandate on on national values mm -hmm. because the new constitution uh, gave us national values in Article 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to go back a little bit, the directorate was established as one of the institutions under the Agenda 4 of the Kofi Annan process that uh -huh. recommended certain institutions to be established in government so that they can address the issues that uh, led to where we got to in 2000 and uh, after the 2007 elections. So basically that's how the directorate came into being. Mm -hmm. uh, the core mandate mm -hmm. of the directorate is to guide in the implementation of uh, the sessional paper on national, val national values and principles of governance, which was approved by parliament in 2015. Of course, the sessional paper was developed by the directorate. Mm -hmm. Then there is also the, nation, uh, the, the sessional paper on national cohesion and integration, also developed by the directorate. Mm -hmm. So we guide the, the, the implementation uh -huh. of the two sessional papers mm -hmm, uh -huh. uh, that, that guide matters national cohesion, matters national values. Mm -hmm. The directorate is also the, the, the government institution that, uh, that uh, coordinates the preparation of the annual president's report mm -hmm. on national values uh, and principles of governance. Mm -hmm. As you may be aware, mm -hmm. the, the constitution at Article 132 requires that the president reports once in a, in a year in an address to the nation on what he has done. Uh, to promote in the promotion of national, national values, values and principles mm -hmm. of government. Mm -hmm. So basically that becomes the, the background, the, the background. Uh, and mm -hmm. the mandate mm -hmm. of the director. Mm -hmm. and, and, and remember it's clear, we should be clear in regards to this that the National Cohesion and Integration Integrated Commission is different yeah. from the directorate. Yes, let me just mention yeah. uh, that uh, uh, the, the NCSE is different from the director. The NCSE is 
an institution established by law, by an act of parliament, mm -hmm. with specific mandates that relate to uh, matters, matters uh, hate speech, matters uh, uh, national cohesion in terms of uh, how, how, how institutions go about making sure that uh, the representation mm -hmm. of the diverse communities in this country mm. is, 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 is fair, it's okay. Uh -huh. So the mandate of the NCSC is very specific. Mm -hmm. They are the institution. It's an, basically an enforcement uh, institution created by law mm -hmm. that has a specific mandate. Mm -hmm. Just and like the directorate has a specific mandate that relates to policy. Wonderful. As you may be aware, mm -hmm. policy is made by government. Mm -hmm. Policy is, is driven by government ministries. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are the institution in government that drives policy, policy. on uh, both uh, national cohesion and values. Mm -hmm. Uh, the NCIC is an enforcement institution established by parliament with a very clear mandate. And so the two institutions are different. Mm -hmm. yes. Very different. And so today, let's have this conversation on values. Yes. On values. And particularly values and its effect in the society or its importance. Um, as you said, it's enshrined in the constitution. But we'll talk about that a bit later on. Yes. For today, let's decipher this issue. Um, what, when, when we talk about national values, what exactly are we uh, looking into? Uh, first of all, Ram, yes. let, let me just go back uh, and, and uh, tell you basically what values are, mm. are all about. Yeah. Uh, we have had this discussion with you in the past, mm. uh, basically trying to understand what values, what are. values are. Values are ideals uh, or beliefs or standards of a social unit. Mm. When I talk about a social unit, uh, I'm talking about a person. An individual. I'm talking about the family. I'm talking about society. I'm talking about basically community. I'm even talking about the nation, as mm -hmm. Kenya is. Mm -hmm. So values are ideals, are beliefs, are standards that we have given ourselves mm -hmm. and agreed that this is the way we want to do. Things. And these standards can be transferred from one person to another, and are also influenced by one person to another. Of course. Uh, there has been conversations as we engage uh, our different stakeholders. There mm. has been conversations that relate to, is it really possible that mm. you can teach values? Is it really possible that you can, <laughs> you can, you can, you can sit in a class or uh -huh. you can sit in a workshop and tell people what values are? Mm -hmm. Or is it, are values just things that you, you, you look at people doing things, you look at how people are conducting themselves, you are mentored, or is it, or, or our values, you know, issues that we can uh, sit across the table and, and, and uh, tell you these are the values you must abide by these you values. You talk over a cup of tea. We, <laughs> we, take, we take the position that uh, it can be both ways. Uh -huh. You can mentor people, you can uh, have values champions that, that, you know, you look at Mr. Musili or look at Ram and say that uh, I think this guy has... Values, values that I need to emulate. Mm -hmm. We also take the position that we can sensitize people, we can tell Kenyans or we can tell our stakeholders that the values that we, in, we think that the society or you should practice are A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And basically when we talk about national values, mm -hmm. we are talking about values that are enshrined in Article 10 of the Constitution. Uh -huh. yes. and, uh, if, uh, and, and particularly now for the youth, when you look at the way we have been conducting ourselves, especially during elections. Can we say that we are, these values that you're talking about here are, are, are taught to the youth? Do they understand it? You know, is it something that has been affected on the ground, the values? Uh, let me say that uh, in our engagements with the youth, because we have engagements with the youth at uh, the county level, mm -hmm. we have programs that we run with the organized youth groups at the, at the county level. Yeah. Uh, I would say the answer is yes and no. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Yes and no because when you engage these people, they are they have issues that they raise, and basically they are talking about how we have we do not have serious role models mm -hmm. as far as values are concerned in society. Mm -hmm. And when you try and talk to the youth and listen to them, they ask you, okay, you are telling us that these are the national values or these are the values that we are supposed to live by. But 
the leadership, the, the people that my MP, my 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 local lead, my local leader, and others mm. are not doing what you're telling us to do, and there lies the problem. There lies the, the reason why we should engage the youth more, mm -hmm. because. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to say that uh, when you go beyond the youth, mm. you basically have, uh, we have lost it a little bit. We, uh -huh. But uh, I think the youth is a key seg segment of society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that should mm -hmm. embrace the national values. Mm -hmm. So that uh, as, as you keep telling, telling them all mm. the time, yeah. and as somebody has just commented, that they are the future leaders. Yeah. As they become the future leaders, mm -hmm. we will have leaders that espouse the national values. There's someone who said that they are not future leaders. So <laughs> they said that they are <laughs> current leaders. <Yeah. laughs> they are current leaders. Of someone course, said they are, uh, they are current. You're not trying to bring the debate of whether yeah, you are future yeah, or current. Well, exactly. Quite interesting. But exactly. values are important. Yes. Um, now, now that you've defined what values are, so now what is it that we are talking about when you say now national values? Uh, when you talk about national values, uh. in, uh, in 2010, mm. uh, this country gave itself a new constitution. Yeah. We should ask ourselves, why did we think that we needed a new const constitution? Mm -hmm. and, have, and in that new constitution, why did we think that we needed to have an article of the constitution that basically talks about national, national values. values. It was a realization. My answer is mm. it was a realization that we had kind of lost direction and we needed to give ourselves ourselves a new direction yeah, yeah. in terms of the way we relate with one another and the way citizens relate with the government. Mm -hmm. Because national values uh, regulate or influence the way I relate to you as a, as a fellow citizen and the way both of us relate to, to government mm -hmm. as, 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 a, as a governance structure. So these, these values are in Article 10. They were put there purposely to give direction, a new direction to, the, to, to this country mm -hmm. because there was a realization across the board that uh, probably we had taken a wrong turn mm -hmm. and we needed to Just realign Ourselves. The aspirations of the nation, the destiny of the nation to to what me and you do on a daily basis. And this is where I would like you to, to chip in. Just take your constitution, go to Article 10, find out what it is. So that we, we, uh, we find out whether these are just allegations. <laughs> you know, but, but especially for the youth, you're a young leader, you want to know about these things, you need to understand these things. National values as enshrined in the constitution of Kenya, Article 10. What are they? You know, do you have any questions in particular as we you know, continue this conversation in regards to the definitive factors of national values have we lost our way how do we bring ourselves back into the uh, you know a uh, promoting national values as a nation the hashtag is one in the morning at Ram Maguko and at Y254 channel you are a youth what do you think about this well as we talk about national values eh, there is um there are different categories that uh, I, I would like us to, to, to touch on. And I'm looking at the classification or the types of values that uh, we have. Um, what are the types of values that exist currently? And, uh, you know, just in, a, in brief, before we touch on, on it, because I'm looking at, uh, at it in terms of uh, 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 the different sectors that exist in the country. Uh, Ram... The, the, although this may be something that we we'll discuss as mm. we build on uh, this conversation, mm. uh, I will tell you that uh, the values did not just land from nowhere. Yeah. We did not just wake up and uh, we imagined the, the, the 17 values that are in the, in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, you, will, you can associate or you can link the values that are in the Constitution to other values that exist within society. And when I talk about other values that exist within society, I'm talking about individual values. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about family values. I'm talking about societal values. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. values that, uh, that relate to specific institutions, mm -hmm. like the institution that we call the public service. We have uh, Article 234, 
that, that outlines the principles, the values and principles of the public service. I'm talking about values then that we gave ourselves that we now call, nation, call national values. National values. Mm -hmm. So basically we go back to uh, where I started and start uh, looking at the, the, the individual as uh, having certain values mm. you uh, as a person you mm. have your their ideals mm. their standards that you put for yourself as a person looking at the individual there is a way that you conduct yourself that you think that is the right way mm -hmm. a responsible citizen should conduct themselves and, and 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 how then should we say that an individual has a role to play in this because like you said that in the different types of values yes. we're starting with the individual first yes, yes. before we go to the family yeah. before we go to other things culture yes. religious yes. Uh, institutions yes, yes. so as an individual uh, what is my role in this your role uh, just to mention uh, a few of uh, one or two of your roles yeah. is first of all to be a responsible citizen a responsible citizen is a, a, a citizen who, who will uh, go out there and exercise their civic rights. A responsible citizen is a citizen who will be honest. A responsible citizen is a mm. citizen who obeys the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And the rule of law is one of the values if you, if you go to Article 10. So we, there are things that you as an individual need to, there's a way that you need conduct, to conduct. There are things that you hold dear. If you are a responsible citizen, as I say, you need to be an obedient uh, a citizen who obeys the law, a citizen mm. who exercises their democratic rights, mm. civic rights, all those things. Mm. So that now we can look at you as, as being mm. a, 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 a citizen, mm. an individual who has values, uh -huh. certain values uh -huh. that you hold here. Then we move to the family. Yeah, that's what I was going so, to. Yes. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Then we move then to the family. The family yes. If you look at the family as a, as a social unit, mm. in that family, mm. there are things that the family uh, holds has standards. Mm. You know, your family or my family, there are things that we do therein as a family mm. and, and believe that that is the way we should conduct ourselves as a family. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. may not be written in a piece of paper, but we have, we have values like honesty, we have values like humility, we have values like, you know, being morally, moral, moral upright, mm, uprightness, uprightness within, uh -huh. within the mm. family unit. Mm. And you know, and, and, and it's quite interesting that you're saying that these things are not written. Because there's some things that we just grew up and exactly. felt like, exactly. I can't do this. Exactly. And, uh, and, and, and it is some, these are things that we are taught mm. from the basic level of the family. Mm. And we are looking into um, different families because families are different. Yes. Um, does it have like um, a, a, a plane, is it like a, a blueprint that should cut across different families regardless of societal or cultural backgrounds? Of course, there are, there, are, there, are, there are constants, you know, there are expectations that society would expect a, a, a good family mm -hmm. that has, has a, a strong values. To be a family that uh, that has honest people, to be a family that that is humble, to be a family go that is God fearing for yeah, that matter, yeah, yeah. to be a family that uh, that teaches the members of that that particular unit mm. that you need to to mm. respect authority, mm. you need to be a responsible citizen. Those are, those are those are the generals. Those mm -hmm. are the general standards mm -hmm. that we talk about. But mm -hmm. I, I I do appreciate your your view that that uh, families are different mm -hmm. uh, depending on uh, different backgrounds, mm -hmm. cultures, the rich and poor, uh, you know. and, and all this. Mm -hmm. I would not want to go to the rich <laughs> yeah, and the poor <laughs> because uh, I would expect mm -hmm. a rich family as well as a poor family to mm -hmm. be honest, to, to exercise honesty, to be humble. Uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let's look at uh, the issue of, um, you know, religious uh, institutions, you know, uh, uh, in terms of uh, how uh, spiritual values and uh, uh, religious exactly. values exactly. also play a role because we, we are talking about an individual and a family. And now, how big is it when the religious aspect comes into play? Uh, Ram, uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's not, it's not a, a, a comment that I'm making. Mm. It's not an original comment for mm -hmm. me if I say mm. uh, it has been observed that there is a serious disconnect, uh. particularly in this country called Kenya, between the assertion that it is a God-fearing society and why 
things seem to keep going wrong every now and then. <laughs> and you so, wonder whether, whether so, the, the so, God-fearing people have, uh, have gone to. Exactly. If you talk about God-fearing uh, society, then you're talking about uh, uh, a society that, uh, that, that observes certain values that are contained in the religious teachings that mm -hmm. we, we go through every other, uh, every other day through, I mean, whether you're talking about Christians, Muslims, or others. Mm. They are teachings that we get from our religious, uh, our religions that tell us how to live with one another, mm. how to live within a society, how to conduct ourselves, yeah. and what not to do. Mm -hmm. Those things uh, are related to, to a very large extent to what we aspire to as a country. Mm. But then now the question becomes, uh, as I've just said, if we are such a religious uh, country, why is it then that uh, these things that we consider to be not very good values continue to exist? Is it that and and, there, and there lies the issue. You know, uh. we need to translate uh, what we learn. Uh -huh. uh, what we learn uh, through our various religions or through our various uh, th from the, all the way from the family through our various religions we need to translate that to how we live on a daily basis mm. that is not what that is what is not uh, that is not what is uh, happening Taking place at, at uh, and, and could it be that you know um the, re uh, the, uh, the religious leaders in the society don't you know, have uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a lag behind are they sluggish are they are they doing what they ought to do in promoting spiritual values or is it the, uh, you know a problem of Hearing the message, but not doing the particular message in India, happen in a talk you know, what could be the issue here? It it is not in my place to yeah. to assign uh, blame mm -hmm. because basically, uh, as I told you, the the work that we do as a directorate mm. is to go out there and tell people exactly how they want, how they need to, how they need to do it, how they need to conduct themselves mm. if they are going to live by the national values. Mm -hmm. We, we are not uh, there to tell you you are not doing ABCD. Mm -hmm. We are there to uh, sensitize the public, mm. to reach out to citizens and tell them exactly what these values are, how you're supposed to conduct yourself at all levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the religious uh, community or religious leaders are one of our key stakeholders. Mm. When we engage them, mm. we, tell the, we pass the same message. But then, of course, you realize that... Uh, there's a very huge difference between uh, what I tell you and what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, if I tell you the, uh, you need to, uh, to practice the national values, which are clear, and I tell you what the national values are, and you go and do exactly the opposite, then uh, you cannot blame the person. Who it's, not that, it's not that you didn't s yes. say what uh, you wanted to say. Uh, uh. For the religious leaders, uh. I would believe that uh, they are passing the message. They are telling people exactly how to live by the values that mm -hmm. relate to their respective uh, religious uh, doctrines. Mm -hmm. But then uh, it's up to the citizen, it's up to the listener to uh -huh, decide uh -huh. how to conduct themselves. So yeah. I'm not a portion mm -hmm. in this, in this, in this <laughs> But quite, quite an interest, interesting comment there. Mm -hmm. You know, that as long as you've, you've, you've done your part, mm -hmm. you know, you've done your part to, to speak it and say it as it should be. Mm -hmm. So the role is now upon you and I, as Kenyans, to implement what we've been taught or what we have learned exactly. in our religious institutions. Exactly. Uh, uh, now, let let's go to the organizational structures or the uh, let's the just institutions, institutions. Yes. Um, what role do they have in this story here uh, first of all if, even an institution like kbc mm. i'm sure in these corridors somewhere you'll find uh, uh, our corporate values are yeah you know values that you and everybody else that belong to this institution mm -hmm. are supposed to live by. They are on the walls there. They are on the walls. Mm. But uh, more often than not, they remain on the walls. <laughs> they do not transmit to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the to the persons that are, that are supposed mm. to practice those values. That applies across the board. It's not just KBC. Mm -hmm. It across, applies across the board in institutions that are private, institutions that are public. But what the institution uh, the role that the institution plays mm. is that the institution must 
guide the, the, the members of that institution mm -hmm. to believe and practice those national values, uh, sorry, those values that, uh, that belong to that institution. institution yeah, that then yeah. will help them to, to focus on a certain goal that mm -hmm. the institution thinks that by practicing those, uh, those values, they will be able to achieve. So basically values, whether mm -hmm. you're talking about national values, family values, institutional mm -hmm. values, mm -hmm. are the foundation. Values are, become the foundation of everything else that will happen on what kind of uh, trajectory the institution will take, what kind of trajectory the family, the, the religious community will take, that is determined by the values that they hold. And this is why institutions also need to play, to, to realize they have a key role in affecting their workers exactly. and influencing their actions at the workplace yes, exactly. because that is what translates to the family level exactly. at the family level yes. so should we have like every institution you know how should they do it um do we should we have like every institution getting that uh, you know the, the values printed on the wall of every institution at the gate you know at the receptions you know because there, it's not there in uh, many places not, it? not not just on the on the walls and the gates mm. there should be an extra step a deliberate uh, effort to make sure that you do not just outline the values mm -hmm. you you go the extra mile to make sure that the members of that institution uh, practice the values that you have, you have set for yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to set rules for it. Yeah, you need to set mechanisms of mm -hmm. making sure that those values are not just there, mm -hmm. but they are, they are, they are, they are, they are practiced. Oh, let's look at uh, uh, public service yes. now. The principles of public service. Um, you know, how important is it and how does it play a role also in this promotion of, uh, of, of values? It is important that uh, just like all other institutions that uh, the public service that, uh, that uh, Manainji relies on mm. to get uh, services, to, to get government services for that matter, operates within certain parameters. And these parameters are basically what we're calling the, the values and principles of the public service. Mm -hmm. They guide every aspect of service delivery uh, in the public service. Mm -hmm. And the key one, the, 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 the most important one is to understand that you are there courtesy of the Mwanaingi. Yeah. That office mm -hmm. that you occupy mm -hmm. in the public service mm -hmm. is for you to deliver services to the Mwanaingi. You hold it in trust of the Mwanaingi. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that, that's why the constitution uh, provided for those values uh, of the public service mm -hmm. in uh, Article 234. And then Parliament went ahead and enacted an act to operationalize that, that particular article. Mm -hmm. 